Lucy Letby's case has left victims' families and the public with one major question, why did she do it? The nurse maintained her innocence through her long-running trial but will now spend the rest of her life behind bars. When Mr. Justice Goss sentenced her to a whole life order, he remarked that her actions exhibited a malevolence bordering on sadism in her actions and that she had no remorse. Prosecutors never advanced a motive as they outlined the allegations against her to the jury and speaking after her trial, detectives said the reason for Letby's free may never be known. Some experts have suggested that Letby may have been suffering from Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a disorder where a caregiver may harm someone in their care to get attention. According to Dr. Dominic Wilmot, an expert in criminology, it's possible that Letby's actions were driven by a pathological desire for attention and sympathy, with her text messages showing she wanted to garner sympathy from colleagues. The criminologist, a senior lecturer in criminology at Loughborough University who previously authored a paper on the Beverly Elit case, said, In our analysis of healthcare professionals who perpetrate violence against their patients, especially children, offending appeared to be motivated by a pathological desire for attention and sympathy emerging as a consequence of their involvement in the case. Munchausen syndrome by proxy, MVP, isn't inherently a mental disorder, rather, it's a type of maltreatment in which the culprits, typically mothers, subject one or more of their children to victimization. Usually the goal is not to even induce permanent physical damage. After all, doing so removes the person the mother has been manipulating to get the attention, sympathy, care, and concern that they may feel unable to get in any other way. They often attempt to outsmart respected professionals such as physicians, which provides them with a false perception of control and expertise. Moreover, a number of them struggle with a distinct self-identity owing to concerns like borderline personality disorder. The special of individual cases is that, in the latter, if a child or suffers permanent injury, there is an unceasingly supply of new patients who can be abused and possibly by nurses or other healthcare professionals. Dr. Feldman added that individuals like this might desire excitement or acknowledgement from those who observe them in stressful situations, and they could potentially receive recognition for persevering despite the unfortunate circumstance of being on duty when numerous children happen to become sick. These are general statements because obviously Lucy Letby is not shedding light on her particular motives, he said. In fact, she may be uncertain herself. Certainly she knew what she was doing and had the goal of severe harming or children, but these perpetrators often lack insight into the why of their own behavior. In that sense, it can often be compulsive or even addictive. James Treadwell, a criminology professor at Staffordshire University, emphasized that addressing the how of Letby's actions is of greater significance than the why, as this could contribute to preventing such incidents from recurring. It's with the how question you can prevent these things happening again. We had a lid and herald shipment in medical situations, if you don't answer the how question, tragic history, terrible history, bereaved families could happen again. Munchausen syndrome is a rare psychological and behavioral condition in which somebody fabricates or induces symptoms of illness in themselves. It takes its name from the German aristocrat Baron Munchausen, renowned for recounting incredible stories of his adventures and history. Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which it is suggested let by may have been suffering from, is a variant of Munchausen syndrome where an individual fabricates or induces illness in a person under their care, typically a child. It happens when a parent or carer exaggerates or deliberately causes symptoms of illness in the child, the website says. The parent or carer tries to convince doctors that the child is ill or that their condition is worse than it really is. The parent or carer does not necessarily intend to deceive doctors, but their behavior is likely to harm the child. For example, the child may have unnecessary treatment or tests, be made to believe they're ill, or have their education disrupted.